Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Alexander Bazzotti, and I'm a recent college graduate from St. Mary's College of Maryland in, you guessed it, Maryland. And I'm here to present to you the Fusion News update for May 3rd, 2023. Let's get started. I have five main stories for you this week. One, nuclear fusion will not be regulated the same way as nuclear fission. A big win for the fusion industry. Two, scientists measure laser heated plasma using Doppler weather forecasting technique. Three, collaboration developing silicon carbide ceramic matrix composites for fusion. Four, Japan adopts national strategy on nuclear fusion as competition intensifies. Five, desktop fusion startup Avalanche Energy lands $40 million and longs new tech achievement. I also have three bonus stories for you this week, so stick around until the end to hear about them. One, nuclear fusion will not be regulated the same way as nuclear fission, a big win for the fusion industry. During our last Fusion News episode, Jeff mentioned this story stating that fusion will be regulated under the same regulatory regime as particle accelerators and separate from nuclear fission. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the top governing body for nuclear power plants and other nuclear materials in the US, voted unanimously to regulate the emerging fusion industry differently from nuclear fission. Private fusion companies have raised over $5 billion to commercialize and scale fusion technology. The decision from the NRC on how the industry will be regulated is therefore a significant deal for companies in the field. This is an important decision that will give fusion developers the regulatory certainties they need to innovate while also most effectively protecting the safety, security, and health of the public. Two. Scientists measure laser heated plasma using Doppler weather forecasting technique. For our second story, we find a recent study published in Physical Review Letters. Researchers from the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, a U.S. Department of Energy national laboratory managed by Princeton University, have used a common weather forecasting technique to gain insights into how powerful lasers turn solid materials into electrically charged particles known as plasmas. The scientists use the Doppler effect, the same phenomenon that causes ambulance sirens to change pitch as they approach and then move away, to measure the speed of light emitted by the plasma produced by strong laser striking a solid target. This measurement is crucial for understanding the behavior of dense plasma, which is produced in inertial confinement fusion devices such as the National Admission Facility at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. The research also found evidence for the existence of a barrier or sheet between the outer and inner layers of the dense plasma cloud. This observation suggests that laser-produced dense plasma behaves similarly to less dense plasma, a finding that was not known before. The experiment was conducted using Colorado State University's Advanced Laser for Extreme Photonics facility, and the results demonstrate that X-ray behavior within dense plasma can be measured with precision, despite the challenges posed by its opacity. Dr. Francis Krauss, the lead author of the study, emphasized the importance of understanding the fundamental characteristics of powerful lasers, which have a wide range of applications and potential future uses. The research was supported by the Office of Sciences of Fusion Energy Sciences and LaserNet US and collaborators from Colorado State University also contributed to the study. Three, collaboration developing silicon carbide ceramic matrix composites for fusion. Our third story focuses on a collaboration between the National Composite Center and the UK Atomic Energy Authority in support of the Haste F program. Fusion-grade silicon carbide ceramic matrix composites are making significant strides in the field of fusion energy. The collaboration between the National Composite Center and the UK Atomic Energy Authority, supported by the Royce Materials Challenge Accelerator Program, is aimed at addressing key engineering challenges in the use of silicon carbide composites as a fusion material. Silicon carbide composites have the potential to enhance fusion by allowing devices to operate at higher temperatures, improving thermal efficiency and increasing the commercial viability of fusion energy production. The collaboration between the National Composite Center and the UK AEA has resulted in a process innovation that reduces the cost of manufacturing by one-fifth of the current methods. 
while also enabling more complex shapes and thicker sections for fusion components. These fusion grade silicon carbide composites are damage tolerant materials with excellent radiation resistance and operating temperatures of up to 1600 degrees Celsius. Compared with traditional metallic materials, silicon carbide components used in fusion devices have the potential to double the electricity generated from every gigawatt of thermal energy produced. The development of high value composites for extreme environments such as fusion devices could unlock high volume, high performance silicon carbide materials for the UK, driving a major transformation in the sector that utilize high temperature ceramic matrix composites, including nuclear defense space and aerospace. This collaboration marks a significant step forward in the development of fusion grade silicon carbide composites, bringing about new UK intellectual property and potential advancements in fusion energy production. Four, Japan adopts national strategy on nuclear fusion as competition intensifies. Our fourth article today comes from Japan, which has just adopted its first ever national strategy on fusion energy. The strategy highlights the need to create a domestic industry and in fusion energy and calls for wider participation of the private sector in research and development. Japan has been a major contributor to ITER, a 35 year international research collaboration that aims to start fusion tests in 2035. However, with the changing environment in fusion research and increasing investment in private sector projects abroad, Japan aims to take a multifaceted approach that includes creating and supporting its own homegrown fusion energy industries. The Japanese government plans to establish a fusion industry council by March next year to develop related industries and draw up guidelines for ensuring the safety of fusion technology. It will also prioritize fusion energy education at domestic universities to nurture specialists in the field and seek talent from overseas and other academic disciplines. This strategic move by Japan and focus on domestic industry and academia collaboration demonstrates Japan's commitment to advancing of fusion energy research and development in the country. Five, desktop fusion startup Avalanche Energy lands $40 million and logs new tech achievement. The story comes from Seattle where FIA member Avalanche Energy has announced a successful $40 million funding round. The company led by CEO Robin Langtree is developing a small scale solution for future power. In addition to the funding round, Avalanche Energy also announced a significant milestone with their second generation fusion device called Marty, operating at 200 kilovolts. This could potentially be the highest operating voltage achieved by any fusion device breaking the previous record of 190 kilovolts set in 2006 at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. CEO Robin Langtree expressed optimism about the progress Avalanche Energy is making, stating, we're making really steady progress. The machines are scaling how we think they should. The company aims to reach 300 kilovolts with the Marty device in the next six months to a year, which would further increase the energy output of the fusion system. Avalanche Energy's approach to fusion energy is unique as they are developing small scale fusion devices that are the size of a large shoebox and could fit on a desktop. These micro fusion devices have the potential to compete against hydrogen fuel cells in industries such as long haul trucking, maritime shipping, and aviation. They could also be used in smaller electric grids or in combination with other clean energy sources. Toyota, for example, has expressed interest in using fusion devices to produce hydrogen fuel. As many of you probably know, the Pacific Northwest, where Avalanche Energy is based, has become a hub for fusion companies and research, with other notable fusion companies such as Helion Energy and Zap Energy, which are also FIA members located in the region. This concentration of fusion expertise and research, along with what we discussed earlier, the recent regulatory changes in the U.S., is expected to accelerate the development of fusion technology. And lastly, we have our three bonus stories, which I promised. First, we have a cool comic titled The Future History of Nuclear Fusion, a letter from 2073, 50 years ago as in today. Fusion energy was a ludicrous pipe dream. Now it powers everything. Dr. Tritium takes you back to pioneers of the nuclear prosperity. Our second is news from the FIA, who is hiring and looking for a UK and Europe director. So head to our site to check that out. And our third bonus story is an article from the Wall Street Journal. 
tech billionaires bet on fusion as holy grail for business. Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are among titans chasing almost limitless energy source. And then actually lastly, a bonus to the bonus is a recommendation to go check out a recent interview featuring FIA CEO Andrew Holland on the Future Tech and Foresight podcast. That is all for Fusion News this week. I truly hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please let me know by liking this video, leaving a comment down below, and subscribing if you are not already. Thank you so much again for watching. Um, and have a great rest of your week. And never forget, if you have a dream or passion, to go for it.